there, I'm Nick Ayers, the National Accounts Manager here at JB Warranties, and we're here with another episode of Trade Talk. Today we have Rick Nato, the Director of Technical Services and Training at Samsung HVAC. Rick, thanks for being here. Would you tell us a little bit about how you got started in HVAC and introduce yourself? Sure, my name is Rick Nato. I'm the Director of Technical Services and Training at Samsung HVAC. We're actually out of Roanoke, Texas. Uh, actually got started in the HVAC industry about uh, 36 years ago. Uh, so <laughs> been in the HVAC industry for quite a long time. Uh, started as a, a mechanic. I went to trade school. I uh, was really into the hands-on uh, aspect of, uh, of the uh, uh, HVAC industry. Uh, and then uh, quickly realized, you know, I'd like to do more with this. I uh, went back for my engineering degree, uh, worked as a mechanical engineer. Uh, and then um, you know, worked with um, uh, several uh, companies, manufacturers uh, over the years. Uh, and now I'm, I'm with Samsung. Excellent, excellent. Well, thank you for being here. Can you tell us a little bit what it's been like working with Samsung? With all that experience, you've got to have some great insight working there. Yeah, I, I th Samsung, uh, really just a great uh, company. When we look at um, Samsung in general, and before I even started with the company, uh, I think I, I had uh, five of their TVs. Uh, just love the technology um, and the quality of the, of the products. Uh, it really stands out. As a matter of fact, I don't think I've had one issue with any of those products. Same thing holds true on the HVAC side as well. So how do you, how do you take the products uh, that we're familiar with from a consumer perspective and kind of move that into the HVAC industry? Very, very interesting. So uh, really uh, enjoy um, Samsung, love the brand. Uh, and again, a lot of those uh, things that they do from a quality perspective and innovation perspective carry over very nicely to the HVAC industry. Definitely, and I, and I think some of the new technology that's in the Samsung HVAC, like the wind-free technology, um, talks to those innovative things that Samsung's doing. Can you expand on that? Tell us about the wind-free a little bit. Sure, uh, yeah, we talk about wind-free. Um, and you know, when you look at HVAC, um, you know, one of the things about the HVAC industry, not a lot of change over the years, um, but Samsung has, has really stepped it up with a couple of innovations. One is the wind-free technology that you mentioned. Uh, and that technology is carried over in a lot of products, uh, whether it's residential or even uh, commercial products as well. And it addresses one main customer pain point, uh, and that's around draft on the occupant. And uh, I think we've all been in a situation uh, where we've been sitting in a restaurant, for example, and all of a sudden the AC uh, kicks on. Uh, and you feel that cold draft on you. You're uncomfortable, you may want to uh, move, you, maybe you, you have to put a sweater on. Uh, and Samsung has really addressed that with the wind-free technology and the way it works is when you approach set point or when the system approaches set point, uh, the louvers will actually close off naturally and all that air diffuses through many holes in the fascia panel. Um, and uh, therefore you can still maintain space temperature, but at the same time you've essentially mitigated the draft on the occupant. Uh, so great technology um, and can be used in a lot of uh, those um, draft sensitive applications as well. Definitely great. So it's obviously been an interesting couple of years uh, in this industry and, and around the world. Uh, what have you seen as far as trends when it comes to aftermarket support, training, um, trends when it comes to supporting people during COVID and supporting your contractors? Yeah, and, and from my perspective, uh, uh, support is, is key. Um, you can have the best products in the world, which I believe Samsung does, and the most innovative products. But unless you have that support infrastructure in place, it's very difficult to uh, maintain a high level of customer satisfaction and, and keep folks coming back for more. Um, you know, at the end of the day, it's, uh, it's about that experience uh, throughout the life cycle of the product. Um, so from my perspective, it's, it's critical um, you know, that we provide a high level of support, uh, even uh, through um, COVID, for example. Uh, we have leveraged technologies uh, such as GoToAssist and some of those things which allow us to monitor equipment remotely and be able to effectively diagnose from a remote perspective. Um, prior to COVID, um, you know, a lot of times you'd end up at a job site um, you know, to really look at the data and analyze the system and so on. And now, one of the positives that came out of COVID is, is really our ability to leverage these technologies to be as effective, if not more effective, than we were prior to COVID. Um, you know, so you know, it's, it's all about leveraging technologies and still being able to provide that high level of support 
um, regardless of the circumstances. Absolutely. And and that makes sense, just being the infrastructure being there, it has to be there or you're just gonna fall flat because people won't be able to get the support they need if you can't be in person, right? So one of the things that Samsung has done is created these mobile training centers, I believe, over the last few years. Can you tell us a little bit about that and how that's addressed this need to be remote? Yeah, um, we, we have a, a mobile training center. We actually have three uh, main uh, training locations, two fixed. Uh, one is in uh, Roanoke, Texas, and the other in Santa Fe uh, Springs, California. Um, and, and both of those are um, you know, a very good um, um, representation of the products that are sold within those local markets. Uh, and we can conduct anything from product uh, training to advanced diagnostic training at those facilities. One of the things we um, saw a need for um, was uh, the ability to bring training to the people that need it when they need it. Because uh, at the end of the day, we understand uh, that when mechanics need to take training, it's not just lost time, but it's lost revenue opportunity. Uh, they're away from the office, the travel expense, all those things. So it's very important that we have the capability of bringing the training to people um, that need it when they need it, um, on time training, so to speak. Right. And one of the things we're able to do is develop a mobile training center. Um, and this is um, essentially a 24 uh, foot box truck uh, that has the ability to kind of expand. Okay, yeah. We have all of our product represented on there, um, both residential and commercial as well. And uh, the beauty of it is we have the ability to perform the same level of training that we would at our fixed locations on the mobile training center because it's equipped with a, a generator. Um, onboard generator. We can operate the equipment simultaneously uh, and it's just a really neat thing. Uh, we have the ability to bring it to any location. Uh, we've been focusing mainly in the east right now just because of the population density Absolutely. and it's very difficult for folks to get around in those areas so we bring it to those Absolutely. folks, have an event. Uh, it's really exciting because one of the things I've found even um, from the standpoint of uh, articulating the value of the products and showing and demonstrating the innovation how exciting is it when you can actually see uh, the product? And, and, and that to me is so much more impactful than just looking at it in a brochure. And it really makes a, a, an impact uh, when, when folks see it. So whether we use it for showcases or whether we use it for actual technical training, gives us a lot of flexibility. Mm -hmm. Well, and I'm sure that technical training on the front end, right, being able to do that helps the aftermarket support as well, right? Because if you can train with the information they need right off the bat, they don't have the issues down the line. Th that, that's correct. And, you know, from the standpoint of, you know, obviously the, um, the technologies um, require a certain level of training uh, and knowledge for folks to be effective. And the training that we develop is really focused on those things. What are the critical things that you need to do as a mechanic um, or as a person operating the equipment to get the most out of the product or to make sure that it gets installed properly the first time? Because uh, at the end of the day, if you can uh, go ahead and install the system, you've gone through all the steps properly, you push the button, it starts off, you can't get much better than that. Yeah. Customers thrilled to death, they now have cooling or heating within the space and you don't have to worry about going through and, and addressing any potential issues there. So the training really uh, provides that level of knowledge that's needed to be effective um, as an organization to be able to install the products. And that's uh, ac across the industry, regardless of what you're installing, having that level of knowledge to be effective is only gonna help um, certainly the brand, but also uh, you as a mechanical contractor in a local market uh, to expand your business as well. If you're successful, everybody's gonna be successful. Absolutely. Yeah. We definitely, being in a warranty industry, we know that making sure the system's working and right when the customer wants it is a great way to keep them happy, and not working and right is a way to keep them unhappy. Um, so, so that's great, it's wonderful all the training that you all are implementing to really support your contractor base. Um, are you seeing any other trends as far as um, what's going to be happening in the future moving forward with, with your support, uh, with support in general for this industry and, and technical training? Yeah, I, I think um, where we look at support, um, as I mentioned previously, we, we have learned a, a lot um, with, uh, with COVID. Um, and, and some of the things we did very quickly because we knew there was still that inherent need to train folks and get them up to speed. Um, even during COVID. Uh, we actually migrated all of our core curriculum, uh, the installation training, the diagnostic training, product training, over to an online on-demand format. Uh, the beauty of that is you can watch and, and take the training 
right at your home, um, you know, right at your computer. And again, getting that knowledge uh, in the hands of the people that need it when they need it. Maybe it's the night before they go out to a job site to do an install. How great would it be to watch a, a very quick um, a training, um, whether it's a video or a training program, that's gonna uh, provide the guidance you need to be effective um, you know, during that install the next day. Absolutely. Or, because it's done in a modular format, if you're the electrician and all you really need to know is how do I connect the wires to this piece of equipment, you can watch a, a five minute training module and be up to speed and be effective at what you do as well. So right sizing the training for the audience is also uh, very critical. And I see a lot of um, organizations kind of moving in that direction. Um, you've also seen a lot more webinars uh, that are being conducted. Um, you know, obviously the leveraging um, Microsoft Teams and some of those things to really be effective uh, and provide the training. Um, and there's a lot of technologies out there that allow us to, to, to do that and continue to provide training. But you'll see webinars as we progress forward. And I don't necessarily think it's ever gonna go back to quite the way it was. Yeah. We know more than we did previously. Um, and uh, we're gonna continue to leverage those resources because my goal, particularly in the uh, tech support side and, and the support side in general, is how do we, uh, if there is an issue, um, how do we address it quickly? How do we respond quickly as an organization? How do we address the problem, get that system up and running as, as quickly as possible? And uh, that's really my, my goal. Um, and we're gonna leverage those technologies. If we can do it remotely, wonderful. If not, that's when we get out to the job site and, and really support from a local perspective. But boy, if we can get it uh, done quickly uh, and get it online, as, as you know, in the warranty side as well, it's, it's very important. It, yeah, it yeah. definitely is. It's a competitive advantage. Um, and just when you're describing those modular training units, that that really, if I mean, even on the sales side of it, you know, if, if they need to learn a little bit more about a particular aspect of the product to give that homeowner or that building owner the information that they need to make the right decision, right? So that the sales and the service side of it, that's that's really impactful overall and it's going to open up more business for all these contractors yeah and it's interesting you mentioned the, the homeowner because um you know I, I think one of the things we do have a tendency to focus on as manufacturers is the installation and the troubleshooting the diagnostics uh, but also we want to make sure that um, the end user um, gets the maximum benefit from the product and we're actually in the process of uh, recording videos um, you know that'll go on to youtube and, and certainly in our learning management system as well but uh, that are available to the end user. And, and again, how do you get the most out of the equipment? How do you maintain it effectively to, to maximize performance throughout the life cycle of that product? Um, how do you operate the remote controls uh, to get the most out of that as well? How do you leverage the Winfrey technology uh, to, to mitigate that draft that we talked about? So there's a lot of things that we're gonna focus on from a user perspective. How do you use that equipment and get the most out of it? and the most efficient operation out of it as well. Yeah. And that's great because in my opinion, educating that consumer, that homeowner, is only gonna make the contractor's job easy, right? Because they see, oh, if I just maintain this equipment, the contractor come in and describes, hey, you've been taking great care of this, we don't have to make any repairs. It's a lot better relationship moving forward and, and anything that does come up, they may be a little bit more knowledgeable and understanding when the contractor says, hey, we need to fix this, we need to just take care of it and get you up and running again. Yeah, and at least they understand um, how something should work, yes. right? And then, and then, oh, you know, the, the video said it should be uh, doing this, it's not quite doing that. Well, let me call the contractor, get him out, see if we can't figure that out. Um, but it uh, gives them a nice baseline to go from. Uh, this is how it should be functioning. It's not, let's, let's figure out what we can do there. And, and really, the other thing that's, uh, um, when I look at the Samsung products, is, is now it, um, it's, you know, I, I've thought about um, as we're, we're talking, um, we, do, we look at the, the Samsung um, products and not only the innovation, uh, but I look at uh, maintainability and serviceability as well. So two very key components of it, because we wanna make sure that we minimize the amount of maintenance that's required again, to maximize performance. And there's very little, um, you know, particularly with these technologies, very little maintenance that's required on them. Uh, and uh, that to me is exciting. I, I come from a background where you, you, there was a lot of maintenance on equipment, whether it's a chiller or those type of things where you need to cl uh, clean tubes on a regular basis, change oil. Um, these systems, um, again, very little maintenance associated with them, uh, which is nice. Uh, and the other thing that jumped out at me um, when I uh, first uh, started with Samsung was really the focus on serviceability. And as, as a mechanic myself, uh, starting in the industry as a mechanic, 
um, serviceability was key uh, because when uh, obviously the the more serviceable it is, uh, the ease of access to things, uh, the quicker you can fix a problem. Um, and also it's a lot easier on you as well, right? <laughs> You're not bending over and, and in these odd positions to, to get to uh, certain um, uh, components on, on the system. And, and one of the things that was amazing to me is when I looked at um, one of the products um, in, in the back, I uh, actually disconnected a board and it was probably about 15, 20 connectors that went to this board. It was the main main board on it. And after I did that, I'm like, ooh, how am I gonna get the new board in? And, and I, was, I was like, okay, this might be challenging based on my prior experience with other manufacturers, right? Um, where, what wire goes where? I didn't mark anything. And I said, well, let me pop it in place. So I put the new board in and uh, I started looking at the connectors. Um, and I said, oh, this one's red. And oh yeah, there's a red one on that board. It's the right size, click, click. Within, I would say 30 seconds, I had all the connectors uh, connected back up and uh, that piece of equipment was functional again. And I was just like, wow, <laughs> that's, that's amazing. And, and really the thought yeah. to do that, um, the color coding of the connectors and really the different size where they could only fit in one place right. makes it impossible to, 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 to mess up, cool. right? Um, you know, and, and that's great from a technician perspective. I don't have to worry about marking what goes where don't have to focus on that. So that was another thing that really is neat. Oh, yeah. And most manufacturers don't think of that. Mm -hmm. that's, a, that's an afterthought. Um, and that's, but it is important as, as we're, we're discussing. Right. Yeah. And, and when you say it's important, it's also for a, a manufacturer as large as Samsung, that's no easy undertaking either. So it was a strategic decision to make it like that, right? That uh, no, no question. Um, you know, and the, the um, brand um, and that, that um, is, very, is very, very critical. I mean, Samsung is a well-known global brand. And, and it's important that that reputation is there. And if it's easy to fix, mm -hmm. easy to operate, uh, innovative, simple to fix, um, you're gonna have that loyal customer base coming back because quite honestly, their experience has been outstanding, uh, both from the new product install to uh, ultimately the experiences they've had after the fact as well. Yeah, any service needs or anything yep. like that, that's wonderful. Well, Rick, thank you so much for the time today. We really appreciate learning about your history and a little bit more about Samsung. Uh, we appreciate it. You all have a great day.